Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing gap junctions between cardiac muscle cells. Okay, right, so we've now discussed that gap junctions are made up of these two connexons, or gap junction hemichannels, uh, which uh, are provided by the two cardiac muscle cells which are going to form this electrical window, and the two connexons join together to form a gap junction, which is also called a nexus or a macular communicans. A connexon itself is made up of a hexamer of connexin proteins, and there is not just one connexin protein, there are many connexin proteins. And either you can use the same connexin protein in all six slots of your connexon to make a homohexema, or you can use different connexins to make a hex heterohexema. Now, I've got one final bit of detail for you which is the membrane-spanning topology of a connexin protein. So what's the actual structure of a connexin protein? Well, basically, if this is the phospholipid bilayer here, so here's the phospholipid bilayer. So now what I've done is I've, instead of now just using one line to denote the phospholipid bilayer, I've now actually put two lines, one to represent the inner leaflet and one to represent the outer leaflet of the phospholipid bilayer. This is just so that we can show the membrane-spanning topology without it looking silly. Okay, so the membrane-spanning topology of a connexin protein then. So here's the amino terminus of the protein here, so H2N here, and then you start it off, it has a first membrane-spanning portion, so the alpha uh, sorry, the um, polypeptide spans the uh, phospholipid bilayer once, goes into the extracellular space, then it spans again, and again, and once again. So you get four membrane-spanning domains, basically, you cross the membrane four times, and this is the membrane-spanning topology of a connexin protein. Okay, right, and what you can do is connect six of these connexin proteins together to make a connexon. Uh, again, you can make these homo or heterohexamers and then join the connexons together to make a gap junction. Okay, so that's all the detail I've got to say on the actual structure of gap junctions. Now let's talk about the function of gap junctions. Well, basically, what they allow is they allow an electrical communication between these two cardiomyocytes that have got gap junctions between them. So let's denote the gap junctions now by a blue dot. So as well as the desmosomes, which are a structural link between cardiomyocyte A and cardiomyocyte B, you also have these gap junctions, which I'll show in blue, which are an electrical link between uh, cardiomyocyte A and cardiomyocyte B. And they're often referred to as electrical windows, basically, between the two cells. So when um, when cardiomyocyte A undergoes an action potential, what these gap junctions are going to allow is they're going to allow the action potential in cardiomyocyte A to induce a car an action potential in cardiomyocyte B. Okay, so when A undergoes an action potential, what's going to happen is that it becomes depolarized, and the main way in which it becomes depolarized is that some sodium ions are going to enter the cell. So you're going to get increased concentration of sodium in the cell, and it's these sodium ions that have been brought in, which I'll denote in green here. These sodium ions have been brought in, and they are what are depolarizing this cell, okay, in the, um, in the action potential, okay? Now, what can happen is these uh, sodium ions can spread, basically, through the gap junctions. They can move from through the connexon on cardiomyocyte A, through the connexon on cardiomyocyte B, into cardiomyocyte B. And if you move some sodium ions into cardiomyocyte B, sodium ions carry a positive charge. So those are going to depolarize the electrical potential difference across the membrane of cardiomyocyte B, and those are going to induce uh, an action potential in cardiomyocyte B, because they're going to raise the electrical potential difference across cardiomyocyte B's membrane towards the threshold potential for the voltage-gated sodium channel, which incidentally is the NAV1.5 channel in cardiomyocytes. Um, and then that will open and it will cause the action potential to propagate along cardiomyocyte B. So basically, what these gap junctions allow is they allow an action potential in cardiomyocyte A to induce an action potential in cardiomyocyte B. 
Okay, right. Uh, final thing I want to discuss is a drug that is not yet approved for clinical use, but is being investigated. Now, this drug is a drug known as uh, rotigaptide, or I think it's ratigaptide, rotigaptide, rotigaptide, okay, rotigaptide, okay, rotigaptide. Now, what rotigaptide does is it binds to the gap junctions and somehow increases their conductance. So, increases the electrical windows between cardiomyocyte A and cardiomyocyte B. So, it increases the ability of the action potential uh, to be conducted from one cardiomyocyte to the other. Now, this conduction window is believed to maybe be... Uh, be uh, dysfunctional in certain types of, of dysrhythmias, uh, so this drug may well very be uh, may well be very useful uh, in treating cardiac dysrhythmias.